It's Jets Dolphins this Sunday. The Jets begin their AFC East schedule. Today we have Crossover Thursday. I'm joining Kyle Krabs of Locked On Dolphins to preview the game. Kyle will lead us back in today on the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Thursday here on the Locked On Network, and you know what that means. It's Crossover Thursday. Kyle Krabs of Locked On Dolphins, John Butchko of Locked On Jets. AFC East clash to talk about here. A couple of 500 or better teams playing against each other, which is a nice change of pace for both of these teams over the last couple of years. Today's Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, so much fun. It's easy to play. No competing against other players. It is you versus the projections available. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 extra money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It is that easy. We love Prize Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. John, great to get back on the horn with you and talk a little AFC East here. Let's let's um let's dive right in. Tell me a little bit about this two and two start for the New York Jets and what the, the biggest storyline has been thus far for you guys. Well, Kyle, it's amazing to be talking AFC East football because the first month of the season, you would have thought the Jets were an AFC North team. Their first four <laughs> games were all against the AFC North. So it feels normal. You know, Baltimore is not our rival. Pittsburgh's not our rival. It's the Dolphins. So great to, if we find, it finally feels like a little normalcy. A normalcy. But, you know, it hasn't been completely normal for the Jets because they've actually won a couple of games in the early part of the season. That's a nice change of pace as well. And last week, Zach Wilson returned to the lineup. Now he suffered an injury in week one of the preseason against the Eagles. The Jets. Weren't so, we're not so accurate with their time frame for Zach's return. They originally provided optimism that he'd be back week one, and if not then, maybe he'd be back week two. Right before the opener, Robert Sala announced he's out at least the first three games. So that was a surprise and an unpleasant one for the Jets, but they weathered the, the storm. Joe Flacco started the first three games. Now, they were only one and two, but I think most Jets fans would have signed up for one and two with Joe Flacco. And Zach Wilson comes back last week second overall pick a year ago out of BYU. And frankly, his rookie season was not everything the Jets were hoping for. I think if the Jets were honest, they would tell you that he was not quite as ready as they thought he'd be heading into his rookie season. Lots of struggles early on, bouts with inaccuracy, some issues reading some of the more complex coverages. The pocket presence wasn't always what you wanted it to be. Full off season of work comes back last week. Now it has some shaky moments, especially in the middle of the game against Pittsburgh. But in the fourth quarter, he played probably the best quarter he's had so far in his young career. He led the Jets back from a 10 point deficit and he looked decisive in the pocket. Once that back foot hit, he knew exactly where to go with the football. He hit some really impressive throws. I think he made some really solid reads. The ball placement was really good. So the question is, can Zach Wilson build on this? It was a, I think if you were asking a Jets fan heading into last week and you told him this would be the performance, would you sign up for it? The answer would be yes. But now he has to build on it. You know, if he comes out this week and has a rough game and throws a couple of interceptions, it's going to undo a lot of the good. So the question, I think the big story for the Jets is, can Zach Wilson build on that effort last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Now, let me turn the tables to you. I know the Dolphins have a lot of storylines heading into this game. What do you think the top thing to watch is? Yeah, it, it, the reality that Jets fans just lived is the reality that Dolphins fans are living now with the starting quarterback not being available and and obviously uh, a very public and transparent and ugly injury to Tua Tonga Valoa uh, with the concussion suffered against the Cincinnati Bengals and the investigation that apparently the league is uh, aspiring to have completed by Thursday night football tonight to make public and announce the findings. Uh, some of the early returns there kind of indicate that the Dolphins did play it by the book as far as 
uh, the protocols that were in place at the time of the handling of the uh, initial injury to Tua on Sunday, that there was some question whether or not that was a head injury. But uh, handing the keys of this offense over to Teddy Bridgewater is going to be a really fascinating transition because Teddy plays a different style. You think about the strengths of Tua Tungvaloa, he's really good in the mesh point and ball handling and very, very accurate quarterback and quick feet. And that's not Teddy Bridgewater, right? Teddy Bridgewater is a little bit more of a traditional under center drop back passer. And how do the Dolphins uh, mesh what they want to be with Tua Tungvaloa with what they feel they are best at with Teddy Bridgewater? And uh, I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to have a chance to come in and just keep the offense on schedule with the speed that the Dolphins have. You always have a chance to break an explosive play. And you've seen that in the Dolphins passing game, but you haven't really seen it in the running game to this point in the year for Miami. So, you know, Teddy, do they change their shotgun frequency? Are they going to allow them to run the same concepts? Will they run RPOs in play action? Will they run the same boot action that, that Tua Tungvaloa has had some success with? Or is this a little bit more of a stationary pocket? And you saw Teddy in the second half against Cincinnati. Little bit of everything. You could tell they were definitely working with a game plan that was tailored to Tua. I would not be surprised if the script and the offense does look a little different. But the objective is the same. You've got Tyreek Hill who is leading the NFL in receiving. You have Jalen Waddle, who's sixth in the NFL in receiving. All of this speed for Miami. Take advantage of that. Continue to space the field strategically and try to manufacture easy throws for Teddy Bridgewater because if you're going to force teams to play you with space, then you should in turn be able to throw on schedule. And that is what Teddy Bridgewater has been when he's batted, been at his best, whether that's been in New Orleans in 2019, when he was 5-0 and taking over for Drew Brees, when Drew Brees was injured with, I believe, a throwing hand injury uh, in 2020 with the Carolina Panthers and in 2021 with the Denver Broncos. So he's been on a couple of different teams, and uh, you hope that veteran experience will allow them to mitigate the upheaval of the offense and, just try to play their game. Uh, another big storyline for Miami that I think is at least worth mentioning here is uh, Byron Jones, the corner. Uh, he started the year on the PUP. He had Achilles surgery this offseason. They were hoping he was going to be ready to go for week one. So I kind of got the chuckle, John, when you're talking about the timeline for Zach Wilson. And, hey, surprise, it's like the first month and he's uh, Zach Wilson's not necessarily ready to go. We found out uh, just yesterday that Byron Jones will not be ready for week four either. And that was a player uh, that Dolphin, the Dolphins were hoping to see ready to go for the start of the year. So it's not a loss because they're playing without him, but it's certainly an addition that you're looking forward to as a Dolphins fan to hope to see get back on the field sooner rather than later. Elias Game Plan is a sports app from the most trusted name in sports stats, the Elias Sports Bureau official statisticians of U.S. Sports League since 1913. You see and hear their trusted facts all the time from ESPN, your local radio broadcasts and television broadcasts, but now you can have all the same stats, facts, and team and player updates in the palm of your hand, all backed by their renowned research team. Take this NFL season to the next level and download the Elias Game Plan app today. Choose from three game plans when you subscribe, weekly, monthly, or annual but you can get 25% off your first month when you choose the monthly subscription using promo code LOCKEDONNFL25. Find Elias Game Plan Sports Betting in the App Store or Play Store today and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL25. It's Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm John Butchko with Locked On Jets along with Kyle Krabs, Locked On Dolphins. We're previewing this week five game between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. Jets fans, it's good to be back in the AFC East after a month in the AFC North. However, what's not so good for the Jets is the fact that they're going to have to face a Miami offense, as we discussed in the first segment, that has lots of speed. When you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, the Dolphins have a couple of big play threats, a couple of guys who are threats to score anywhere on the field. However, the Jets on this defense, Corner has become a strength. Drafting Sauce Gardner, fourth overall out of Cincinnati. He's been every bit as good as advertised at his at this point in his young career. And then a guy who's been a little bit less heralded, DJ Reed, who was a free agent signing from the Seattle Seahawks. He's also been pretty locked down in the early stage of this season. So I think an interesting marquee matchup. 
on that side of the ball. Although, Kyle, here's my concern from the Jets' perspective. It's not so much the receivers versus the corners, but I think the Jets are going to play a lot of zone. That's their system, especially on the early downs. And despite a big week last week for Jets safeties, LaMarcus Joyner had a pair of interceptions. Jordan Whitehead, the other safety, would have had a pair of interceptions if one had not gotten wiped out on a penalty. But Jets safeties and linebackers have really struggled. And I look at the way the Dolphins are going to draw this up. I think their goal will probably be to get Hill and Waddle matched up in zones against these linebackers and safeties. That's how I would do it if I, if I were the Miami coaching staff. Yeah, and, and you think about Mike McDaniel and the Shanahan-type systems, and especially in San Francisco with Jimmy Garoppolo, so much of their passing volume is in the middle of the field. And, and you really think about the crossers and whether you're running man or zone with the speed that you have with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell carrying away from leverage across the middle of the field where you have all of that room to kind of build up is – kind of what the recipe has been and you've seen a lot of routes that break inside you've seen uh, kind of spot throws where they're they're throwing away from zone coverage but the voids because of the vertical speeds that those guys threaten you would like to think that if you're Miami that's an area that you want to attack and try to take advantage of um, coming into this football game but I think the thing that to piggyback off of that for Miami that I'm going to be very very interested in uh, when the Dolphins have the football, is can they get the running game going? You know, they, they have two performances out of four games this season in which they got into the 80s, and that's the high water mark. And, and Mike McDaniel, with his background as a run game coordinator, and Teron Armstead, and Connor Williams, and Raheem Mostert, and Chase Edmonds, you saw all these pieces come in and you tried to add everything up and say, okay, well, you know, you'd like to think we can get the running game going with Mike McDaniel and his creativity. Hasn't happened. And, and I think a lot of that comes down to two players on the offensive line, one of which Quinn and Williams, uh, who's one of the, the more disruptive interior defenders in football, uh, is going to have a chance to really get after. And that's Liam Eikenberg at left guard. So if Quinn and Williams can create a lot of penetration in those matchups, it can continue to derail what has been a, a sore spot for Miami. And then on the edge, you've got Greg Little, who is playing right tackle in the absence of Austin Jackson, who's on injured reserve. And these tight ends in general, you know, we might see Hunter Long back this week for Miami. He's missed the last couple of weeks with an ankle injury. He was a third round pick out of Boston College. He's, in my opinion, the more high ceiling inline player to actually block and create a hard edge so that you can run outside right now. It's been Durham Smythe, Mike Gusecki, Seathan Carter, the other tight ends been out with a concussion since week one. So they're really soft blocking on the edge. So if I'm the jets, I want to say, okay, let's get really physical and collapse this edge and force these backs to cut back into traffic. So uh, from a run game perspective, John, before we get over to jets, offense, dolphins, defense, would love to hear your thoughts on the edge play for New York and how they have performed early on this season. Well, the Jets rotate guys in and out, and that's actually been one of the major complaints of the fan base because some people are saying, you know, your top players, Quinn and Williams, Carl Lawson, they're not getting as much playing time as you would expect. I think there it's kind of a tale of two edges, though. You have the rookie Jermaine Johnson, who they Jets traded into they they had two first round picks originally. They traded up to get a third first round pick this past spring, and they, they took Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. Now, Johnson's been involved in a couple of sacks, but he's been really solid playing the run off the edge, which was what a lot, of, a lot of people were expecting when they drafted him out of Florida State. I believe he has nine run stops so far, and he's you know kind of rotating in and out. On the other side, you have Carl Lawson, who has done a pretty good job generating pressures off the edge. He's kind of the, the guy the Jets are looking to to be an explosive pass rusher, give them that, that juice off the edge, but he's not much of a run defender. So I, if I'm Miami, I'm running at Carl Lawson. And if I'm seeing Jermaine Johnson on the field, I mean, he's been good at shedding blocks. He's been good at, at bringing guys down and stopping the run. I, I think you want to run to the Lawson side, but let's uh, let me move to the other side of the ball because I, we were mm -hmm. talking about offensive line play and this matchup has me a little nervous because the dolphins have a very aggressive defense. They're blitzing from all angles and the jets, it's not just that they have a lot of injuries. It's that they've had to reshuffle this offensive line a couple of times. So you have guys who are not used to playing next to each other. Now, Dwayne Brown did return to practice for the Jets on Wednesday. The Jets signed him in the preseason after Mekhi Becton got injured. And 
I, I still can't figure out Kyle when he had time to get hurt between the Jets signing him and when he, I mean, he played like 20 snaps in preseason. He played a couple right. of practices and then there's another guy, you know, speaking of injuries that just came out of nowhere, you know, out of the blue, right before week one, Robert Sala says, Dwayne Brown's on IR. It's like, what, wait, what happened there? So Dwayne Brown might be back, which would be good because the Jets had Elijah Vera Tucker, who's a guard, who they was first round pick last year, who slid from right guard to left tackle and actually held up pretty well last week. But if Dwayne Brown does come back to the lineup, that allows Barrett Tucker to go back to his original spot. However, you're creating yet another new alignment on the offensive line and against an aggressive defense. You know, I'm sure you'll see lots of blitzes from secondary players, guys coming from all angles. I think that there's some real danger for the Jets, you know, with guys who are not used to playing next to each other on the offensive line. Let me ask you this, too. Is, is it uh, Connor McGovern that stepped in at right tackle? Because I know rookie Max Mitchell, who had played fairly well for New York uh, at right tackle went down this past week in, in the fourth game of the season against Pittsburgh. So what's like, assume Dwayne Brown is back or not back. Like what is, what is the actual left to right for the offensive line read in your okay. mind? So it's Connor McDermott. So the Jets have two Connor, Connor mix. Connor, you have, Connor, yeah. Connor, you have Connor, Connor, McGovern, Connor McGovern, who's the center. Connor McDermott is the backup, uh, tackle so i think if dwayne brown is in the lineup you'll have dwayne brown left tackle you'll have lake and tomlinson left guard mcgovern i mix them up all the time kyle i can't tell you how many times i've had to like <laughs> delete a video and reshoot it because, because we're I doing one up. take i'm throwing myself under the bus i'm good with it connor mcgovern's the center i think if Dwayne brown's back you'll see vera tucker move to right guard and then you'll have mcdermott at right tackle now if Dwayne Brown's not back. You'll have Vera Tucker will play left tackle. Again, Tomlinson, left guard, McGovern, center. You'll have Nate Herbig, who the Jets claimed off waivers over the offseason from the Eagles, play right guard, and then McDermott at right tackle. So okay. I think it really comes down to who's playing left tackle, who's playing right guard. If Brown's back, Vera Tucker slides to right guard. Herbig is to the bench. Uh, one thing that I'll be really fascinated, regardless of the combination up front, John, as you mentioned kind of the aggressiveness of this defense, and they have not shied away from blitzing. They're blitzing at a high rate, but they haven't necessarily been converting those pressure opportunities into sacks at a high level yet this season because without Byron Jones, they're playing a lot more zone coverage as compared to press man on the outside, disrupt the timing of the routes. We're going to trust our guys outside on an island and crowd the middle of the field. And if you're going to live on the outside and throw outside the numbers, you're going to have to make big boy throws all throughout the game. So there's a lot more cover three, a lot more Tampa two. like you're seeing these zone coverages. And I'd be curious from your perspective, how has Garrett Wilson as a rookie who's been productive early on for the Jets as the 10th overall pick after kind of a, a quiet first week, they kind of realized, Hey, 10th overall pick, let's get this guy on the field and get him the ball. How has he acclimated to, winning at the NFL level? Is he winning against man? Is he finding soft spots in zone? You know, that specific matchup for Miami with, with Garrett Wilson bringing a new element that the Dolphins have not seen in the past. How do you anticipate he translates into a more zone-heavy Dolphins defensive shell? Uh, so far, it's been all of the above. He's looked really good. In fact, you know, you look at his game last week on the stat sheet, you know, it wasn't super impressive. I think Zach Wilson's still building trust with him at this point. Uh, Garrett Wilson played a lot with the second team offense in training camp. And that might be one of the reasons Joe Flacco was so comfortable going to him in the early part of the season when Flacco was in the lineup. Last week, you look at it, there were some opportunities Zach Wilson had when Wilson was open, but he kind of hesitated in a way he was not doing with Corey Davis, who a receiver he was a little bit more comfortable with based on their play together last year. So I think, Garrett Wilson's yet to earn Zach's trust yet. I mean, last it, it was it wasn't a case where like Zach Wilson's afraid to throw into a tight window because again he was doing it with Corey Davis and Davis made some big catches on the last two drives when the Jets uh, registered their two touchdowns to come back and win. But Garrett Wilson's just effortless. I mean, he's a smart receiver. He knows how to find the, the holes in the zone. But he's also he just when he changes direction, it, he just does it in, in a very deceptive way, and it's easy for him to, to break away from coverage. Now the Jets are kind of using him all over the place. They're using him in the slot a little bit. They're moving him outside. So I'm not sure, you know, how the Dolphins align their coverage, whether they have guy, whether they have, and again, you have probably a lot of this goes back to who's healthy at corner, but 
you know, Wilson's a guy I think the Jets look to pick their matchups with. And, you know, I, you see him line up all over the place, Kyle. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access needed to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. You can add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Crossover Thursday here on the locked on network. And it is that time. We're going to do some predictions for this game, this AFC East clash. And, uh, uh, John, I'll let you home team gets to or away team gets to call the coin on the coin toss, right? That's correct. Uh, okay. So I'm going to call second. No, I'll go. I'll go first. Let me go first. I want the ball and we're going to hopefully score. I, I, that's something for Miami. Uh, they have given up opening touchdowns on some of their early possessions uh, in games. And it's kind of put the whole game script. Okay. We got to go score. Uh, but when I look at this game, Obviously, the concern is not having your starting quarterback playing this game. Uh, but as we've talked about the line of scrimmage and the trenches, uh, I do look at the Dolphins' defensive front as an advantage for them against New York's offensive line. Uh, I do think while ideally you would have Byron Jones available to you uh, to play more main coverage, I think the zone can help to prevent some explosive plays for the Jets that might help them to break this uh, game in their favor uh, that that's the script that they used against Cincinnati and, and it held well until the end of the game and they used it against Buffalo and persevered Miami's coming into this game with a little bit of extra rest obviously having played on Thursday night football in week four I would strongly encourage Dolphins fans though do not underestimate this New York Jets team being two and two the manner in which they won last week they're starting to string together a little bit of confidence. And, and I had a chance to watch the Jets play on Sunday, and you can see it. You can see that, you know, the investment that's been made in building this roster and, and doing an active rebuild, it's moving in the right direction. And I know Dolphins fans will point to, well, the Dolphins have had a lot of success against the Jets in recent years. This is going to be a closely contested football game. I, I do believe that, but I do pick the Dolphins to win this game. I'm going to say a score of 21 to 16 is our final score. And my guess is Dolphins come out on top. You know, Kyle, this is a tough game. It's always tricky when you have a divisional game because it's always yeah. a wild card. I mean, I think this game could definitely go either way. Uh, a part of me is nervous because every time the Jets have been in this spot in recent years, they're coming off a big win. You're starting to feel good about things. There's always been a little bit of a letdown. So with that history, it makes me nervous. The Dolphins, you know, team with plenty of explosive weapons on the offensive side of the ball, a defense that, as we talked about, could give some issues to kind of a patchwork offensive line. But as you said, I mean, yeah, this Jets team is improved. I think that they, they're building confidence. I mean, to me, this is one of those games that's a coin flip. It could come down to who makes the big play, you know, whether it's Tyree killer, Jalen Waddle on one side, you know, is it Elijah Moore, maybe Garrett Wilson or Brees Hall on the other side. I, I, I don't know that there's a ton that differentiates these teams with a, with a Teddy Bridgewater in the lineup. I mean, I think a lot of it is we talked about is going to be com coming down to who prevents the big play, but you know, Kyle, through the years we've, I've done these crossover shows and, the other host has always liked me because the Jets have always been so bad that like I'm the one host who picks against my team all consistently. So I have to like enjoy this while it lasts. It. Now it looks like my looks like my team's gonna be competitive. So we'll say Jets 24, Dolphins 21. Very tight game. A game could easily be 24, 21 the other way. I oh. dig it. I absolutely dig it. And I did that on uh, the crossover last week with with the Bengals guys. I said, hey, hey, common sense says Dolphins um riding a hot streak, uh, but playing on a short week, they 
played 90 snaps defensively. Common sense says pick the other team, but I got to ride the hot hand, so I'm going to pick Miami anyway. So I don't blame you one bit. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, the Jets are, are turning around and we could put the New England Patriots in last place in the division. That's all for our show today. Always great chatting with Kyle. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to it where podcasts are found. You'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast horse, please give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the episode a big thumbs up. Help the channel out, and it helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Have a great Thursday, Thursday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week.